Happy New Year, mamas. It's Carrie from Reset Brain and Body joining you for Mental Health Mondays. So today I want to talk to you about my annual New Year's ritual. I do not believe in New Year, New You, and I also don't necessarily believe in resolutions, making these giant changes to everything. Uh, as you probably have experienced in your own life, typically New Year's resolutions fail by mid-February. So what I want to share with you today is my own way of getting clear and grounded on how I want the next year to look, at least what is within my own control. As we know from 2020, change uh, is inevitable and <laughs> control is an illusion. And so planning and preparing often seems futile, especially right now when we're constantly being uh, reminded <laughs> that the best laid plans don't always come true and that we have to roll with the punches, be adaptable. And that is how your new year intentions should look to, is that you don't have these set goals that are so strict that if you veer a little bit or get pushed a little bit off path that it all of a sudden is a failure and you throw it out the window. We want to remain fluid. And so I like to keep things loose and really based around a feeling. So the first thing I like to do, and I do this every New Year's Eve, is that I reflect back on the year and I do it month by month. And so if you have already done this, great. If you haven't, it's okay. If it's like a few days past the new year and spend some time really reflecting on the last year, month by month, taking account into what is it that I did? What is it that brought me joy? What were some lessons that I learned? I just go back and look at my calendar because that's the easiest way for me to do this. Or I go back and look through some of my old journals and I just know like, oh wow, okay, I did a lot more than I really remembered doing. Or wow, we had a lot of really cool experiences. Um, and that is why I mentioned this in the past. I do like to notate my gratitudes almost every day so that I have these small moments that I go back and reflect on because it's those small moments that often we miss as we go back and we look at the whole year. So again, going back month by month, kind of taking account of what the year brought you and what you had to overcome. And then with that, I sit down and I really think about like, okay, what is it that I want to let go of? What is it that I'm not bringing into 2021? Again, that I have control over. And then with that, I have a little bit of a ceremony. And so whether you write it down on a piece of paper, all those things that you don't want to bring into the new year, all those things you want to let go of, rip them up, throw them in the trash, or be a little bit more dramatic, <laughs> throw them in the fire and just say, you know, to, to heck with it. I'm not bringing this into the new year. Almost like your own little smudging <laughs> ceremony of letting that stuff go. I mean, truly, truly letting that stuff go and really trying to have a separation that then allows you to come into the new year with a little bit of a cleaner slate. And again, the ceremony can be done on January 4th, January 15th, February 28th, <laughs> as so long as you're kind of doing it as a way to just remind yourself and again, be more intentional. This is also something that you could do every year on your birthday or around your birthday or any type of year ceremony, right? So if it's an anniversary or the beginning of a school year, these same practices can apply, not just for New Year's. Okay, so you go back month by month reflect, then you are really aware of the things that you don't want to bring into the next year, again, calendar year or anniversary year. And then from there, it's really sitting down and saying, okay, how do I want to feel in this next year? And this is where I like to do a little bit of a meditation and just to get myself into a clear space. You know, this last year, you know, this coming into 2021, I just sat in some quiet when the kids were napping, which took, you know, I had about 20 minutes to get this done. But I made sure to just be really relaxed and, you know, nurturing myself and think about, okay, how do I want to feel? And then when I went from the how do I want to feel, how can I support that feeling. And so it's not about losing 20 pounds and going to Europe and getting a new job. It's like, how do I want to feel? And then how can I support myself through that feeling? So for me, 2021 is all about peace. I don't know about you guys, but in 2020, I was reminded yet again 
that I have so little control and I was reminded of my own resiliency and I had to work hard. I don't know about you guys, but it was hard. It has been really hard work in 2020 and just, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm feeling tired. I'm feeling like I don't want to work so hard. And I think so much of it was facing resistance facing change and being constantly disappointed. I like to call these expectation hangovers when we have a vision of reality that then is not met. And we have to deal with then that hangover of our unmet expectations. And I think 2020 was just expectation hangover after expectation hangover after expectation hangover. Because just when you thought things were going in the right direction or just when you thought you know you had a handle on things, a lot of times the floor just dropped out from under us. And so it was, I know for me, a lesson in resiliency. But with that, what I'm so grateful for is that testament to my own strength. And I hope a lot of you saw that in yourselves too, of like, wow, I can handle a lot of adversity. I can do really hard things. But for me, 2021, I'm like, cool. I know that I know that now. <laughs> I'm reminded, thankfully, but I don't, I don't want to anymore. Like I really, <laughs> I want to just like, let things happen and not have to struggle or resist or force or push. And so for me, 2021 is all about garnering more peace in my life. And there's a metaphor I like to tell clients a lot about, and it's this idea that if you want something, you have two options. And so go ahead and just picture yourself on a beach. I think we all wish we were on a beach right now. <laughs> picture yourself on a beach and just watching the waves hearing the waves come in, rolling in, and you're flying a kite. You're sitting there flying a kite, and the kite falls way out there, way out, like past the sandbar, way out, and you want that kite. And you have these two choices. You can swim, get in that ocean, get cold, get salty and sandy, and go get that kite and the waves will be crashing and there'll be a riptide and you will probably have to struggle, but you really, really want that kite, so you are gonna fight to get that kite. Or you sit on the beach, you have someone bring you over a pina colada, keep your, hand, your feet and your hands in the sand, warm in the sun, and eventually that tide brings in that kite to you. Which scenario is more peaceful? Which scenario feels like less struggle. And I think if you were able to apply this metaphor to a lot of things in your life, you'll be able to find that you can end up getting the things that you want, that feeling that you want with more ease when you just let go a little bit, when you surrender, when you recognize that if it is supposed to come to you, it will. And you don't have to struggle and force so much. And so I know for me in 2021, I'm just, I don't want to force. I don't want to push. I want to trust in the organic arrival of things because there's an ease that we all deserve to feel. It doesn't mean that life is not without pain and suffering, but that suffering component is when we see struggle and we fight up against it. We resist it. We say, no, I want it different. This reality doesn't meet my expectation. I don't like this. I don't accept it. So we just keep hitting and hitting and hitting and it creates that ongoing suffering versus here is reality. And we say, okay, I get it. It's painful. There's no more resistance. There's no more of that friction. It's just, okay, acceptance. It exists together. And I think as we move into 2021, we have to recognize that this isn't all of a sudden going to be this remarkable year. I think there's been a lot of over glamorizing of what things are going to look like going forward. And in all honesty, if you really are truthful with yourself, I mean, today looks pretty similar to what it looked like four days ago, right? And this next year, as we navigate the pandemic, things are going to continue to be in transition. And we have to allow ourselves that fluidity, that adaptability, that coexisting with reality versus resisting. So my intention for 2021 is to feel more at peace, to bring more ease. And that is my practice of how I'm going to do it. And I hope that you find in your own ritual, that own feeling that you are hoping to cultivate 
in 2021 and the ways in which you can support it. So if you think about it on a very tangible level, I know for me, the things I need to do to support this feeling of ease is that I have to wake up at 5.30 and it's going to be okay. I will wake up at 5.30 to have more ease in my morning. I will make sure that I take care of myself because if I take care of myself first, I'm so much better at taking care of others. And my job is to take care of others. As a mom, you take care of others all day. And so if you take care of yourself first, may it be easier. Maybe there be less resentment. For me, that means I make sure I have some sort of exercise. It means I eat breakfast. It means I wake up with a little bit of buffer before my kids wake up. It means that breakfast is ready for them, so there needs to be no argument about what they're eating in the morning. It means that I meditate and I journal. And that is how I support myself, feeling more at ease, feeling more at peace, so that I can ready myself to go handle whatever it is that life's going to come my way. If you need additional support with this, I know for me, 2020, the only thing that was keeping me grounded was my weekly therapist session <laughs> because I wasn't, I was not good at taking care of myself because I was surviving. I was, I was resisting. I was feeling that friction, that expectation hangover one after another after another. And for me, my therapist, I know will help guide me into this new feeling into 2021. And if you need support with that, if you want support with it, we are here for you at Reset. But go ahead, take 20 minutes, perform your New Year's ritual, identify what that feeling is that you want for 2021, and identify ways to support yourself through it. All right, thank you. I will see you next week.